Hi, I'm Wayne Hellman, and this is the second in a series of SmartFox Server 2X video tutorials. In this episode, we're going to walk through some of the new features of the new SmartFox Server 2X admin tool. Let's get started. I'm just going to open up a browser here and navigate to localhost port 8080. From here, I'm going to launch the admin tool. Click on the bookmarks tab and I'm going to load the profile of the local host and log in with the default username and password, both of which are SFS admin. The first thing you'll notice in the new admin tool, it has a vastly improved runtime statistics dashboard that provides you with a number of tools to monitor your server. Here you have detailed CPU and memory usage indicators, as well as the server's JVM thread information. As with previous versions of the admin tool, live metrics are also available, uh, and it gives you a, a really good overview of the load and performance of the server at any given point in time. Entirely new to the admin tool is the ability for multiple administrators to be logged on simultaneously. And so an administrative chat panel is also provided to facilitate communication between admins. Just close that. On the left side of the tool is the administration modules panel. Now this contains links to various modules for GUI based configuration. So let's open up the zone configurator and have a look in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new zone. I'm going to click the Add button. So let's call this new zone My New Zone. As you can see, there are quite a few configuration options here. I can't go through all of them during this tutorial. However, I encourage you to look through them carefully. Most are self-explanatory. If you aren't sure, hover over the blue icon to the right for a tooltip. Let's leave the default settings on the screen and move to the Advanced Settings tab. Here, you'll find a new feature that will especially be of interest to anyone wishing to cluster a SmartFox server. You now have the ability to implement your own class to generate player IDs on the server. This opens up numerous doors for custom development across multiple systems. Also here, but not yet implemented in this version, is the ability to enable and disable the zone level events. The words filter and flood filter tabs are somewhat self-explanatory. So let's move over to the zone extension tab. Here, you have the ability to define your zone extension. The SmartFox Server 2X extension architecture now forces a single zone extension to handle all zone events and requests. I've created a very simple server extension that we're going to use with the simple chat sample application. The name field you see here must match the name of a directory in which you put your extension on the server. So I'm going to put uh, a directory name here named simple chat ext. So in our SmartFox Server 2x directory, under extensions, I've created a folder called Simple Chat EXT. Next, I have to select what type of extension this is. I'm going to leave it as Java. And under the file field, I have to enter the class path to the zone extension, which is com a51 integrated.sfs. Simple chat zone ext. The properties file field enables you to reference a text file that can pass various values to your extension. The reload mode I'm going to leave as auto, and what that's going to enable is the possibility for us to add a new jar and overwrite the existing one, and that will automatically be picked up by the server. If necessary, the Database Manager tab allows you to configure a database connection to your favorite database. 
And similarly, the BuddyList tab allows you to configure the built-in BuddyList functionality of SmartFox Server. And the Privilege Manager is new to SmartFox Server 2X. This allows you to create access control groups for your users. Let's create a new one and call it Guest. Make it ID 0. Now, what I can do here is deny events for this group. All I'm actually going to do is say add extension calls and I'm going to say they're not allowed to send object messages. Click update and now our zone configuration is complete. So I'm going to click submit and you'll see here our new zone has appeared in the zone list. So let's go ahead and make a new room for our zone. Let's click on our zone and then click the Add Room button. This will bring up the general settings. Let's give our new room a name of the lobby and leave most of the settings as their defaults. So let's head on over to the Permissions and Events tab. And this brings up a screen where we can fine tune which events are fired by the server and assign some permissions. So we can move items from the available items to selected items and vice versa, both for permissions and for events. So they're easy to move back and forth. And the reason you want to do this is to save bandwidth and server resources. The room variables tab allows you to define default room variables for the room. Let's just open up this dialog for a second. And there are some new features here, including the ability to flag variables as global. So let's create a new one called foobar. And we're going to assign the uh, global variable here. Let's turn that on. And going to give it a value of hello world. I'll just click update. And now you can see the global variable is present. The extension configuration is much the same as the zone extension configuration, except extensions here will be available only at the room level. So let's go ahead and save our room. And you can see it's now available in our room list. The last thing I want to do here is change the TCP and UDP port that the server is listening to. So let's go over to the server configurator module. Under the General tab, let's change the TCP port to 5151. And just for the fun of it, let's change UDP port to 5152. Now we're going to run the provided simple chat sample and change some settings to work with our new port and zone. Even though we've changed the UDP port here, it won't really be utilized with our sample since the UDP protocol is not yet supported by Flash. You'll need to use uh, either Unity or Java or the Adobe Air 2 runtime to make use of UDP. So I'm going to go ahead and submit those changes. Now, if you remember, we registered an extension in our zone. So let's quickly pull up Eclipse and have a quick look. We have a simple zone extension that listens for the user join room event and handles it with on room join handler. So I'm just going to go to that class and all this class really does is send back a message to the user that they've joined the zone with the uh, current port. So let's open up Flash Builder. Now I've got the simple chat sample application open here and I'm just going to scroll down here and the XML file that it loads is in the config folder. So let's go there and open that up and we're going to change the port now to 5151 and the zone to my new zone. I'm just going to save that file. Now before we run this we need to stop the SmartFox server and restart it with 
our new port. So that's going to start up again now. And you're going to notice that it's now listening on port 5151 for TCP and port 5152 for UDP. So let's go ahead and run our simple chat. And let's log in with a username. And you'll see as soon as we log in, the server spits us back a message saying, welcome to Simple Chat Tester. You're in the My New Zone on port 5151. So that concludes our second episode of SmartFox Server 2X tutorials. Remember to check smartfoxserver.com for updates and support.